Welcome back to the FTN NFL Team Preview Series. Again, I'm your host, Mike Randall. Follow me on X at Randall Randall. We, are, as always, are sponsored by Boom Fantasy, folks. Boom Fantasy, top choice for daily fantasy sports action. Has the most innovative gains that cater to both the casual and the hardcore fan. You can win up to 500 times your entry only at Boom Fantasy. Download on the App Store or Google Play. Use that promo code FTN to get a no-sweat bonus up to $100 today. We need Patriot insight. We need New England insight. And the only person I go to is the great Evan Lazar. Follow him on X at EZ Lazar. He's a senior reporter and host for the Patriots Catch 22 at Patriots.com. Evan, it is great to have you on here. I really appreciate it. Patriots are a team with a lot of interesting parts. People want to know about them. We're going to start, of course, with the quarterback position. Drake May, what are you hearing? How is the progress going? And do you expect him to start week one and be the quarterback here for the 2024 season? Well, as of right now, everybody around the Patriots who are going to be part of this decision are talking about a marathon, not a sprint when it comes to Drake May. And I would say just in general, the roster and the team as it stands, I think everybody is pretty well aware of the fact that this is a rebuild and they're in year one of a rebuild and uh, there's no reason to rush anything. And they're going to have a little bit of a leash here from Robert Kraft to go out there and do this hopefully the right way, as they like to say, uh, around New England. So uh, in terms of week one, is the door open for him to start week one? Absolutely. Uh, do I see that as being uh, entirely realistic at this point? No. I, I think they they brought in Jacoby Brissett uh, for all the right reasons, and the intention is to allow Jacoby Brissett to start the year and ease Drake May into things. But that being said, if we get out there in a week and uh, I talk to you in a month from now and Drake May has just completely blown doors in training camp, uh, I don't think that that door is completely closed to the fact that he's not uh, even an option to start week one. But he's going to have to go out there and, and really earn it. Turn to the backfield now. 26-year-old Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, last year, again, battled injuries throughout the season, had a thousand rushing yards, had the 69 receptions in 2022, really a phenomenal year. Last year, only played in 12 games, four yards per carry, only 619 rushing yards, 38 receptions, of course. Coming into this year, has the contract. Antonio Gibson there now. Talk to me about the running back touch share in New England. Evan, you know, it's always sort of a thing here where we're unsure of where it's going to go, exactly who's going to get the touches, but Ramondre certainly is the lead RB. My question is how much of that is going to go to him? Right. And historically with the Patriots under Belichick, you're hundred percent right. It's been a running back by committee. I know the fantasy community has absolutely hated drafting <laughs> Patriots running backs in the past. And I'm all, I'm in on the joke. I, I totally understand where everyone's coming from, but honestly, the last couple of years, Ramondre has been a workhorse back. He's uh, played 65 uh, I believe it's like over 60. Uh, I think it's 65 off the top of my head uh, percent of the snaps since the start of 2022. So he's been the guy uh, when healthy for the Patriots, maybe even deterring a little bit from what Belichick has typically done in New England by platooning backs or being more situational. So uh, I do think they would like to cut down that number a little bit and not uh, go into the season and have the wear and tear on Stevenson that he's had the last couple of years which has led to a slowdown down the stretch a little bit in 22 and then an injury in 23. So maybe they can uh, get him a little bit more uh, together for the long run, if you will, um, by spelling him a little bit more with Antonio Gibson, who I think is a great fit for the style of offense that they want to be with that 4-3-9 speed. He's going to have that ability to run an outside zone offense and uh, cut up the middle of the field and hit those explosive plays and then, of course, contribute in the passing game too. So I expect this to be a little bit closer to maybe a 55-45 split uh, to start the year with Antonio Gibson and Stevenson. But make no mistake about it, they they paid Stevenson. Uh, Gerard Mayo said in the spring that he's our starting running back. So Stevenson will be the, the RB1, if you will. Uh, but I do think Gibson is going to cut in a little bit to that workload. Turn to the wide receivers now. A lot of talent in this receiving room. Just not sure the pecking order. Reading all the great insight here in Demario Douglas. He is an athletic guy, can make big plays. I'm hearing that he's going to be the wide receiver one, at least coming into the year. Kendrick Bourne, of course, Jalen Polk drafted, uh, Javon Baker, Jalen Rager's there, KJ Osborne is a veteran. Sort this out for us here. A lot of talented receivers with different skill sets here for the Patriots. Yeah. So I look, I starting with Pop Douglas uh, off the top. So last year, he led the Patriots in receiving. Now, that's not saying much. He had 561 yards, right? So the offense wasn't very good, uh, but he was their lead guy. 
And uh, he showed a lot of promise as a rookie. That was actually a Bel- Belichick era record for a rookie receiver uh, to have that many receive, uh, receiving yards in year one under Bill. He's not typically a guy that features rookie receivers very often, but I think what the Patriots found out early on in the year last year was that Pop Douglas was their most dynamic player on the offensive side of the ball in the passing game. So when you get to that point, you have to look at it and say, well, we need to feature this guy and we need to feed him the ball. And that's the big question with him is with that frame 5'8", 180, 185, the volume, you know, how much volume can he really take and stay on the field? He did get banged up at times last year. He had a concussion, uh, kept him out for a couple of games. So can he be a guy that's going to be a high volume, a hundred plus target player, or are they going to have to maximize his uh, strengths and kind of use him as almost like a, a super player in certain areas where uh, he's only going to be a 65 to 75 touch guy. That's going to determine his fantasy value right there is the durability factor. And if the Patriots are worried about his frame holding up in a high volume role. So that's why I feel like they drafted Jalen Polk. I, I think they believe that Jalen Polk, is going to be the high volume guy uh, eventually. Uh, maybe not in week one, but down the road, he's sort of going to be the chain mover, the possession receiver, uh, the uh, guy that helps them, you know, matriculate the ball down the field. And Pop Douglas is going to be that explosive playmaker that might only touch the ball a handful of times in a game, but those handful of touches go for a chunk of yards. And I, I think that would probably be the goal for them in this offense. But the, the last thing I'll say on Pop, if you really are interested in drafting him, Drake Mays talked a lot about how Pop Douglas was a lot like Josh Downs, who he played with at North Carolina a couple of years ago and was his go-to receiver with the Tar Heels. There's a lot of overlap with their skill sets there, so I do think that Drake May enjoys throwing the football to Pop Douglas. So again, if Douglas can stay healthy and he can prove that the durability thing isn't going to be a factor at his size, then I do think there is a role for him to be a high-volume guy. Oh, great stuff, Evan, as always. Last question, then we'll get you out of here. Strength of schedule per projected Vegas projected opponent win totals, second hardest behind the Steelers. However, I isolated that here at FTN with the non-conference opponents, those not as strong. So obviously, a non-division opponents, rather. The division is really going to be a challenge, as we know. Talk about the defensive upgrades under Mayo, how this could change, and how you think it plays out for the strength of schedule. Because obviously, rookie quarterback, going to look to limit turnovers, really play field position, and it starts with a strong defense. Yeah, I look, it, out of all the things that Belichick did wrong over the last couple of years down the stretch that led to his exit, he was able to continue to hold – a pretty good defense throughout the entire end of his tenure, even at the bitter end, you know, drafting a guy like Christian Gonzalez, you know, Keon white, some of their free agent additions, Matthew Judon, you know, those types of players that still worked out even post Brady for the Patriots. So last year, they were the ninth rated defense in DVOA in the entire league, despite the fact that they lost Judon three and a half games into the season and Christian mm-hmm. Gonzalez as well in that Dallas game. They lose probably their two most talented players on the defensive side of the ball, and they still were able to be a top 10 defense by most of the advanced metrics. So they're bringing back basically all the same people besides Bill. <laughs> so we'll see mm-hmm. how much of the coaching thing is a factor, right? Like he's the greatest head coach of all time and probably the greatest defensive of mine in the history of the NFL. So losing that is not something that we're overlooking at all at Patriots.com. We understand that that's going to be an adjustment for DeMar- DeMarcus Covington, a first-year defensive coordinator and a first-year play caller, I should mention, and Gerard Mayo, one of the youngest head coaches in the NFL. But they're going to have scheme continuity. They're basically going to keep it the same in terms of the X's and O's. And they're also going to have a ton of personnel continuity too, basically bringing back the entire defense from last year. So on paper, they're extremely talented defensively. I say this all the time. They have all the different types of pieces you'd want. They have the elite blue chippers, Judon, Christian Barmore, hopefully Gonzalez builds on that first month that he had last year. But they also still have some of those lunch pail Belichick, you know, do your job type of guys to to fill out the roster. So uh, they're very, very good on paper on defense. We'll see how much the coaching absence of Bill Belichick and Steve Belichick, who is calling their plays the last couple of years, what that means for them in terms of the the brain trust, you know, the brain power on that side of the ball. Can't ask for more than that in 10 minutes, folks. Robust Patriots insight. Only person to go to here, Evan Lazar at EZ Lazar. 
on Twitter, senior reporter, host Patriots Catch 22 and Patriots.com. Evan, would love to check in back with you in August as we get closer here to the season. Really excited for the Patriots. Obviously, historic success, changing of the guard, rookie quarterback, but a lot of upside here. Patriots, always a focal point of the NFL. Thanks so much for joining me. Anytime, Mike. Anytime. The NFL Team Preview Series is sponsored by Boom Fantasy, your top choice for daily fantasy sports action. Boom Fantasy has the most innovative games that cater to both casual and hardcore fans. Win up to 500 times your entry only at Boom Fantasy. Download now on the App Store and Google Play. Use promo code FTN to get a no-sweat bonus up to $100.